This video is sponsored by Line 6. Hi there, Perfecto De Castro here and welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a great day. This is the brand new Line 6 Catalyst CX100. It is the updated version of the Catalyst 100, Line 6's original all-in-one do-it-all amplifier. If you follow my channel, you may have already seen the previous Catalyst 100 being used in a bunch of videos here on my channel. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the differences, all the upgrades that the Catalyst CX has over the previous version. And then I'm gonna show you a MIDI setup that I put together to get the most out of the Catalyst CX, plus a couple of tricks you may have not known that the Catalyst is able to do. Big thanks to Line 6 for sponsoring yet another video and for sending me my very own Catalyst CX100 to show off to all you guys. And if you're ready for New Gear Day and you want to give me some extra support, then please use my affiliate links to all these products in the video description. Buying from these links are of no extra cost to you and the small commission that I get helps me keep making these videos for everybody to enjoy. Thank you so much. Okay, the proof is in the playing, so they say. So before we dive into all the nitty gritty specs and setup thingies, here is a jam I put together using all the tones from the Catalyst CX100 going straight into my audio interface. Enjoy. As already mentioned, the Catalyst is Line 6's line of do-it-all guitar amplifiers. You get HX quality amp models, cabs, and effects, but packaged in an easy to use and easy to tweak layout. And if you want a deep dive, there's also an available Line 6 Catalyst app that you can pair uh, to these amplifiers for both mobile phones and desktop applications. So what remains the same? For the Catalyst CX100, we still have the same format 1 by 12 combo with scalable power section from 100 watts to 50 watts to 0.5 watts to even a speaker mute function for you know silent recording setup you still have the same XLR DI output with cabinet simulation an effects loop that is switchable between a regular effects loop or a dedicated power amp input through the return and unfortunately you still get the old style USB B big port the knob layouts and button functions are also the same. Now, what's the difference? The biggest difference is that instead of just six amp models, we now get 12. Also updated is the way effects are handled with the Catalyst CX. With the old version Catalyst, Effect 2 is dedicated to reverb, while Effect 1 can be your choice between pitch, delay, or modulation. But with the Catalyst CX, Effects 1 and Effects 2 can be any one of the four effects choices. But they have to be different effect types. You can't have, say, 
two delays or two reverbs for effects one, effects two. So they have to be different from each other. And as already mentioned, for deep dive tweakers, there is the Catalyst app available. However, the new version of the Catalyst app is not available to me at the time of filming. So <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I tweaked everything just using the knobs on the amp itself. Now, instead of diving into all the sounds of the Catalyst CX100, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the sounds that I put together, along with how they work with the MIDI setup I have accessible by my feet. If you've been into the guitar multi-effects digital switching game <laughs> as long as I have, you probably have an old MIDI controller kicking about uh, in your you know, music room or storage space. And that's what I have. This is a Behringer FCB1010, which was the MIDI controller of choice. Uh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> in, in the 2000s, I guess. <laughs> Can't believe that's over 20 years ago. It's still a pain to program, but it does the job in opening up all the capabilities of the Catalyst CX100. Now, like with the old Catalyst, there are still three versions. There's the CX60, the CX100, and the CX200. The CX100 and 200 have the five pin MIDI ports. And while the CX60 can still be controlled by external MIDI, you have to go in MIDI through USB since it doesn't have the five pin MIDI port. Okay, so here's a quick run through of how I got the FCB 1010 to work with the Catalyst CX100. Now, this is not going to be an in-depth uh, tutorial on how to make it work because uh, not all MIDI controllers work the same way. But you can find all the MIDI implementation codes in the Catalyst CX100's pilot guide manual. As already mentioned, my FCB 1010 has the UNO chip. So my bottom row of switches controls my presets and the top row of switches can be assigned to continuous control messages. Okay, first programming the presets, which is fairly easy because the Catalyst CX100 only has technically 12 presets you can work with, 13 if you include prompt to go into manual mode. Okay, so this bank right here has nothing on it. So let's program something onto foot switch number one. Okay, so I'm gonna select foot switch one, go into edit, and then I'm gonna go into select and foot switch one, program change, and then go to the next number. And this is where we'll assign our number values. Now also keep in mind that some MIDI controllers operate from zero to 127 and others operate on one to 128. So I think the FCB 1010 operates on one to 128, while the Catalyst operates from zero to 127. So uh, just, you know, do the offset, <laughs> offset by one. So if I put in program zero, zero here, it doesn't do anything on the Catalyst, as you can see. If I go back into it and go program zero one and then hit enter, you can see that it changed to the manual mode. Okay, zero two, see, channel A, zero three, channel B. Okay, so that's how to assign the preset change or switch to manual mode on the program change buttons. Okay, so now let's assign some continuous control commands to the top row. Let's say I want to change effects blocks for the effects to a parameter knob. So now I'm gonna enter into edit mode. There we go. And then up, then up again, select that. So now this number will be the continuous control command group. Effects two is assigned to a MIDI CC number 37. So 37, there you go, confirm. And then we're gonna enter value one and value two. So if we look at the Catalyst CX100 MIDI table, we have values zero to 23 available for effects two. Zero to five is delay model, six to 11 is modulation, 12 to 17 is pitch filter, and 18 to 23 for the reverb. And again, we have to offset by one. So one to six, seven to 12, 13 to 18, and 19 to 24. So right now, that is an orange light right there. Let's say I want to turn it into a modulation effect. So let's go zero, seven, and that should be our chorus. And then value two, let's say I want to switch that with a pitch model. Let's go to number 13, zero, one, three. 
which is the Growler synth model, my favorite <laughs> effect in this amp. Confirm. Okay, so now you can see that FX2 has a purple light, which indicates the pitch filter module, right? And if I push button six, it switches to the blue modulation effect. So that's how I have everything set up. And of course, look through the MIDI table and look for the function that is useful to you and you can assign it to your MIDI controller from these switches to the expression pedals. So the bottom row controls my preset switching, while the top row opens up the functionalities of the Catalyst CX100 because I assigned them to control the different effects blocks via MIDI Continuous Control or MIDI CC. Okay, so here is my first preset, which is my clean patch. So it is the clean amp model with a little bit of subtle rotary modulation and a plate reverb. So let's check out the top row. So button six is my uh, boost on and off. Button nine is my effect one on and off. And then expression pedal one controls the intensity of effect one. But instead of having it all the way up when it's towed down, I have it uh, end at around 100 or so. That way it's not like overly wild with some of the effects. And then expression pedal two is a volume pedal, which is positioned before the amp models. That way I can get different shades of overdrive with the crunchier presets. Now to control the effects even further, I have button 10 set as my tap tempo. Now, after all of this, I still have two buttons left, which I have assigned to change the effect type. So button seven changes between a chorus and uh, a tape delay. Tape delay. Then button eight switches between a tremolo. And the octave fuzz in the, <laughs> in the pitch effects block. And then in case things get too crazy, I always have button nine as my, you know, effect one on and off. Now to keep things simple, I have all the functions for the top row buttons the same for all my presets. Though if I wanted to, I can actually change the MIDI CC numbers for buttons seven and eight to control other things as needed. Okay, so let's check out uh, preset two, which is my sort of bluesy overdrive preset. This is based off of the new amp model assigned to the boutique amp slot, which is a GSG 100, 
which I believe is a sort of a Dumbbell style amp model. <laughs> So nice, fat, clean, I can boost it. Let's turn off the delay. And then I still have the other effects. Uh, tremolo, change in intensity, change the tempo, I still have the Octavia fuzz. So this tone you heard in the earlier jam track. Okay, the third preset is my crunchy uh, guitar preset. This also uses one of the newer amp models assigned to the crunch slot, which is a 2204, you know, JCM 800-ish tone. Boost. And with my before amp volume pedal, I can ride the game. Let's put a little delay. Now also baked into preset three is a fun little effect. Uh, which is part of the pitch slash filter uh, effects block. And here is how that sounds. <laughs> I believe it's, it's called Growler. I like it. And you also heard this tone in the jam track earlier. And I can control the mix by uh, using the expression one pedal. <laughs> I love it. Okay, now preset four is my lead tone, and this uses the high gain uh, amp model. Ride the gain. This is enough gain for me, but I can still kick in a boost for, you know, to get it over the top. <laughs> and 
then I have the same option. So chorus. <laughs> Finally, preset five is my fake bass. So that uses the octaver from the pitch filter block and I have it running into the chime amp model. So I can have it as, you know, a, a doubled octaver or just the octave on its own. And then if I turn off the effect, I have my nice chimey voxy tone. And if I don't need the octave, I can switch to any one of the other effects that I have available on my feet. So chorus. delay with boost Okay, before I end this video, let me show you a couple of tricks you may not know that the Lion 6 Catalyst is capable of. First off, Lion 6 Catalyst amps can interface with your mobile device, be it Android or Apple. A lot of people don't know that probably because of the old style USB-B port. Nowadays, you don't really need much. You can get a USB-B to USB-C OTG cable from Amazon. And if you have the old style iPhone like I do, <laughs> I'm due for an upgrade. But uh, if you still have a lightning port, then you can just get one of these uh, USB-C to lightning port OTG adapters. So with the connections made, you can use your phone to play back your backing tracks. Another thing you could do is to record quick video clips using your phone's video app with the audio coming directly from your Catalyst amp. So here's my phone. I'll put it on a stand right here and hit record. And here we go. <laughs> And 
And then to check your playback, just, you know, play it on your phone and the sound will come out of your Line 6 Catalyst. <laughs> Okay, so here are my thoughts on the new Line 6 Catalyst CX100. My initial impression from my previous Catalyst 100 video still holds through and carries over to the Catalyst CX. And that is the Catalyst CX100 is still a pretty solid option as an all-in-one guitar rig for the up-and-coming and budding guitar content creator. The six added amp models expands the tonal range, especially in the low end girth, which is needed for you know, much heavier music. And the updated ability to assign different effects blocks to effects one and two further expands the tonal palette as far as color goes. And if you need more control beyond what's given to you by the optional two button foot switch, you can, you know, choose the MIDI controller of your choice and just program away and you'll be able to access all the hidden functions of the Catalyst CX100. Now there's a couple of things that Line 6 hasn't fixed yet from the previous version of the Catalyst. Preset switching still has an audible delay. <laughs> And that little quick fade in and out is also there when you're uh, turning on and off an effects block. So when playing live, you have to keep this in mind and <laughs> time, time your switching perfectly. But that is less of an issue when you're just using it at home or in your studio. Now the other flaw is more of a personal preference and that involves the audio interface aspect of the Catalyst CX. First off, there still isn't any Bluetooth functionality. So you can't just stream tunes off your phone wirelessly into your Catalyst CX100. You'll still have to deal with this situation right here. And then the audio interface functions more like a proper audio interface, as opposed to something that is idiot proof and <laughs> easy to use. So while you can play back your backing tracks from your phone into the Catalyst 100 and hear it through the speaker, the backing track does not come out of the direct out. So in the process of recording all of this, you heard the backing track from the phone being picked up by my, <laughs> by my vocal mic right here, instead of being recorded into my audio interface and logic. And that signal routing also kept me from remixing on Instagram. <laughs> Because the remix function on all the social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Shorts, TikTok, they're not designed or they're not intelligent enough to work with a proper audio interface where all the sources are separated from each other. But those apps are able to recognize signals coming from more simpler interfaces that sum up everything and feeds it out as one single audio stream. So on one hand, functioning as a proper audio interface makes it great if this is going to be your only audio interface uh, in your setup. But if you're planning to get the Catalyst CX100 for a more simpler purpose, like, you know, quick social media posts, or even just recording yourself on your phone jamming over some tunes with the backing track and your guitar tone baked into the video. Yeah, it would take a little more involved setup to be able to use the Catalyst CX100 for that stuff. Okay, there you have it. That is how I get the most functionality out of the new Line 6 Catalyst CX100 amplifier. Again, big thanks to Line 6 for sponsoring this video and for being such a great friend and supporter of my channel. And if you want to get your very own Line 6 Catalyst CX100, please use my affiliate links in the video description. Thank you so much for your extra support. You've made it this far, so give this video a thumbs up, like, hit subscribe if you haven't yet, and don't forget to ring that bell. And let me know what you think of the Line 6 CX100 in the comments section. YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video, so click here to watch it, then go grab your guitar and play something. You all know the drill, practice makes perfecto. Cheers, guys.